Hi everyone. I hope you're all well. Let me see who's here for our focused activity 810. It's what day is it today? They all seem to run into one another. It's a uh, Wednesday. And it's another gorgeous, gorgeous day. The sun has been shining all day. Let me know who you are when you log in. And we can say hello. Andrea, hello. <laughs> it's lovely to, well, I can't see you, but <laughs> I can picture you. How are you? I hope you're well in this strange, strange time. <laughs> you're very good to join is the level two, three, four, five as well. <laughs> it's going well. That's good. That's good. That's good. So this focus activity, it's a good one, actually. I like this one a lot. Um, yeah, trying to be positive. That's all we can do, eh? It's, it's um, important, I think, not to... Uh, not to think too far ahead, no? To try to take it from day to day and sometimes even just from moment to moment, no? If we think too far ahead, <laughs> we might freak out, you know? You know that expression, I know you know that expression. <laughs> uh, so we need to stay focused on the, on the very present, no? Are you doing, I'm curious to know, are you doing any, uh, are you doing any sort of creative projects, Andrea? Like at the moment, no, we find ourselves at home with all this free time. Uh, <laughs> and I think a lot of people are doing creative things or maybe DIY, DIY, do you know what DIY means? You probably do. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. Buy that thing. No. Are you uh, are you a DIY person, Andrea? <laughs> I think you're maybe more of a, an artistic, creative person. No. Good man. Here and now. Yeah. 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 That's all we can do. Even. You know, at the, especially at the moment, but even when all of this is past. Oh, you're a gardener. Oh, very good. How do, can you describe your garden to us? Is it big, small? Gardening is a great thing to be doing in this weather. Who else is with us? I see we have a, a whole, two people. <laughs> oh my god, we're going viral. <laughs> I like gardening too, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I'm afraid. But it's a very good thing to do, to spend time outside. Ah, nice. Okay, that's a good size. It's not too big, it's not too small. And do you have vegetables or fruit or fruit trees or? Oh, it's you. Hi, Lily. Hi, Pet. How are you? Elena, hi. <laughs> the party is getting started now. Ellen is here. <laughs> so far, we're just a small, intimate group of four. Your plants are blossoming now. Of course, it's just gorgeous the weather with the sunshine and these beautiful temperatures. Good girl, Elena. Yes, you will be able to do this lesson. Of course you will. Of course you will. It's a good one, actually. Um, but uh, Lily, I was asking uh, before you came online, I was asking Andrea if he, now that we have all this free time on our hands, you know, are you doing any creative projects? 
drink more hot water. Why do I need to drink more hot water? I'm drinking, well, does tea count? Is tea okay? Uh, <laughs> why do I need to drink hot water? Can you tell? Is there something wrong with my complexion? <laughs> But drinking hot water is good for me, that's true. Are you doing any creative projects, Lily? You too, Elena. Are you doing any creative projects at the moment? We have all this extra free time. What are you getting up to? We'll start the focus activity in the moment, but I just wanted to see if, um, if you were doing anything different, no, than you normally do, seeing as we find ourselves in a situation where we have all this free time. Oh, you're still working, Lily? Really? Oh, it's good for my throat. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm talking a lot. Well, I'm talking a lot when I do the focus activities. The rest of the day, I'm quiet enough. <laughs> We are still working. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 Um, so you don't have the free time then that a lot of us have. Okay. So you're working and you're doing your English. Good girl. Okay. Let's have a look at our focus activity for today. It's uh, about childhood. It's a really nice one, actually. I like this one a lot. Look, we're going to be talking about memory and childhood, talking about our childhood memories, in fact. We're going to look at uh, the use of used to and would when we speak about the past. And we're going to be learning some vocabulary uh, and phrases, uh, uh, good expressions that we use for. Um, describing childhood and children and their behavior. Let me see what Ellen is saying. You're trying to, oh my gosh. Oh, you're going through all your emails. Oh, okay. You want to send them exercises to the kids, to the small kids. Okay, that sounds like a good plan, but that's a, quite a job <laughs> that you have to do. <laughs> It would be good to have a, a focus activity or some sort of video lesson with the small kids if that could happen. Uh, it might be hard to manage, but nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Okay, let's look at the first slide. So first, of course, if we were in the classroom, we would have a great time discussing these at length. But we're not, we're here. So I'm going to ask you guys the questions and you can tell me the answers. So Andrea, Lily, Elena, what, what's your earliest memory? So think about your childhood. What is your earliest memory? So like the memory that, um, Oh, poor Elena, your phone is going crazy. Your phone is always going crazy. Your mobile is always ringing. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> um, so try to think your earliest memory. So the memory of when you were the youngest. Okay, so um, like, is it when you were two, maybe three? maybe a little bit older. Of course, we've got quite an age gap now between our viewers. We've got Andrea, who's let's say mature, uh, and Lily, who is uh, young. She's, you're 18, right, Lily? 18, 19, if I remember correctly. I think you're about 18, 19. Uh, Andrea, I hope you're not uh, <laughs> offended by my calling you mature. <laughs> 19. Okay. Oh, oh, Ellen, you remember your grandparents? Oh, that's your earliest memory, seeing them and playing with them. Okay. 
Andrea says his earliest memory was when he was two and a half years old and he was oh, oh and you were brought to the kindergarten and it was a nightmare. Oh no, so it's a bad memory, is it, Andrea? It's not a good memory. <laughs> Overaged, I love it. I've never heard that before. <laughs> so you're over 18. So underaged is under 18 and overaged. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm going to use that. Okay. <laughs> Very good. That's that's it. So, was your memory of going to kindergarten like a sad, traumatic memory? Oh. How about you, Lily? What's your earliest memory? You don't have that far back to think. <laughs> mm. You just invented it. Wow. You're a true linguist, Andrea. <laughs> Lily says she remembers when she was six and it was your first time you went to school. Oh, and the first day you lost your Chinese book. Oh, gosh. These are obviously memories that um, that stick in your mind, no? going to school, going to kindergarten. But let me think, let me ask the next question. Do you remember a lot from your childhood? So like, do you have a good memory? So memory in English has two meanings. Eh? Oh, Lily, your dad was, oh, you poor thing. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's awful that you still remember as well that he was angry. Oh, but do you remember a lot of things? I was saying memory has two me two meanings in English. So it can mean, uh, I've written it down here, it can mean memoria and also ricordo. No, I like to have a good memory, a very important memoria, <clears throat> but to have good memories, a very dei, dei ricordi. Yeah, so it has these two little meanings. Do you have a good memories? Or a lot of memories? Sometimes it's possible that we make, that we uh, confuse memories with things that we hear, no? Hearsay. Hearsay is... Um, is when we hear a story or information from another person, no? Passaparola, kind of. Um, uh, maybe we think we remember something because we have heard someone tell a story many times, for example. Oh, you do, Elena. You have a good memory of your childhood. That's good. And you remember lots of things. That's good. That's good. That's why you're always happy and smiling now. <laughs> what about, um, is there a specific smell or a sound or a song or music or um, a, a that, that reminds you of a moment from your childhood? Hmm. For example, uh, for me, um, the smell of dried apricots, uh, dried apricots. Um, Andrea, you have a good memory of that traumatic period. Oh, <laughs> it sounds like it was tough. Hmm. Um, I was saying that I this the smell of dried apricots reminds me of when my father used to return from South Africa every year. He used to work for a company and travel every spring to South Africa. And he brought back dried apricots. And it was very exotic to have dried apricots in the west of Ireland in the 1970s, I'm telling you. So I can still associate that smell with my dad coming back from work in Africa. 
Uh, you love the smell of the sea, oh, Lily. And does that remind you of your childhood, yeah? Did you spend time by the sea when you were a child? Oh, that's a lovely one. The smell of rosemary reminds you of your paternal grandmother. Oh, lovely. It's so, it's incredible, isn't it? The sense of smell and how it can evoke uh, memories and bring up memories. Oh, you did. You grew up near the sea. Wow. Okay. Hi, sea. So, do you feel nostalgic about your childhood? Do you think of your childhood and wish that um, you could go back? The smell of fig leaves in summer. Oh, nice. Have you got a fig tree in your garden, Andrea? I have a fig tree in the, at the end of my garden. Two fig trees that have grown around each other and so their branches are all intertwined. I love figs in the summer. Do you feel nostalgic guys about the summer? Elena says orange juice and the smell of roses remind you of your maternal grandmother. Oh lovely. I love the smell of roses. <gasps> And we're coming into that time of the year when we're going to be uh, smelling flowers. Parmigiano reminds you of your... Wow, you've got lots of smells. Wow. That reminds you of all your grandparents. Fantastic. Did you spend a lot of time with them when you were growing up, Elena? You must have. Huh? Andrea says powder. I'm not sure what's that in what that is in reference to. You might have to. Oh, wild fig trees. Nice. Yeah. That happens a lot here. You no, know, children growing up with their grandparents. Lily says her house was so near that every night you fell asleep the sound of the sea waves. Wow, that close to the sea. Oh. Sounds like heaven. That sounds really, really beautiful. It's lovely to hear water at nighttime when you're falling asleep, be it a river, the sea, the ocean, uh, or even rain. I like the sound of rain at night when I fall asleep. Lovely. Okay, let's go on to the next slide, all right? So, when you were small, all right, when you were small. Yeah, and Lily feels nostalgic. Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. I am nostalgic about my childhood too. Oh. So listen now. Think about when you were a child. What did you want to be when you grew up? Hmm. What did you want to be? So did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up? Did you have your dream job, your dream career, and think, I want to be this person? What did you want to be? What job did you want to have? <laughs> Andre and Lily, do you know each other? Have you met in the school? I'm sure you have. I'm sure you must have. Well, I wanted to be a teacher when I was small. Yeah, I did. I did. It was what I wanted to be. And I eventually became one. I did lots of other things before I became a teacher though. My CV is, uh, <laughs> let's see, how would you describe it? A colorful patchwork. 
Oh, Anna, you wanted to be a painter. Oh, I didn't know you were an artist and that you painted. I want to see some of your paintings. And you wanted to be a doctor, Andrea? Wow. Lily says she, since she was at primary school, she wanted to be a fashion designer. Andrea, you would remember Lily. Lily is tall, beautiful Chinese girl. She's 19, but she's very mature. Her English is fantastic. <laughs> oh, but you were not good at drawing. You don't need to be good at drawing to be a good artist. You can be artistic without knowing how to draw, surely. <laughs> <laughs> so an R. So we have an artist, a doctor, a painter, and a teacher. Yes. When the school opens up again, we will make sure to have our loyal online followers. We will have a special uh, get together for our loyal viewers <laughs> because it's always the same people. Okay, now look at this question here. Hmm. Work in pairs. Okay, well, there are only four of us. Work in pairs and see if you can guess the top 10 jobs that kids would like to do when they grow up. Okay, so let's see if we can write a list of the top 10 jobs. Hmm. What do you think, kids? the typical dream jobs that kids want to be, that kids want to have when they grow up. What are they, do you think? A teacher, of course. <laughs> you wanted to be a doctor and then you became a bookkeeper. That's right, yeah, but I yeah, remember you didn't, a uh, singer, you think people want to be singers, yes, 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 yes. Do you think pe children dream of being uh, bookkeepers, Andrea? <laughs> a bookkeeper, Lily, in case you don't know, is like, um, like an accountant, you know, somebody who works with numbers. Teacher, singer, artist, what else? You, what you must do for this exercise is per, think that you are a child, you know, pretend you are a child. Go back in your mind to like that seven, eight year old version of you. And what did you want to be? Or what did your friends want to be? Actor, actress, hero, Soccer player, yeah, football player, yeah, 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 exactly. A sports person. Astronaut, ballerina, very good, yes, the classic nurse, good. Very good. <laughs> We've got quite a list there. Let's see, on the next slide, it tells us what the answers are. Oh, actually, yes. Okay, no, I will send you a link in a moment, okay? So here are the answers. One second, let me see if I can move my screen. Doctor, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, one second. The answers are, so, okay, so, According to, this is not the answer is according to me or, or to uh, this focus activity. This is this list of top 10 jobs comes from um, an article uh, from a website called Career Addict. Yeah. And when we're finished this page in the focus activity, I will send you a link to an article which goes into detail. It's very nicely written, actually. Um, so you, later, after the focus activity, you can read the article. It gives details behind each of the different jobs, dream jobs. Okay. 
Dun, da, dun. From number 10, so starting at number 10, apparently the number 10 job was a singer or a musician. Okay, so that's number 10. Coming in at number nine, we have writer. Hmm, we didn't see that one, we didn't guess that one. Um, writer coming in at number nine. At number eight, athlete. So, Andrea, this is what you suggested, you know? You suggested the... Um, Lily, sorry, you're asking me by email. Yeah, we can send you the link by email, but I will post it in here in the comments as well, okay? I will post the link uh, to the website page into the comments field, yeah? And you can just click on it. But if you like, we can send it to, e to you via email too. Um, number eight, so Andrea said soccer player, no, so an athlete. Number seven, we have the doctor. I thought doctor would have been higher up on the list. But anyway, doctor is number seven. Ballerina, very good. Andrea, you guessed quite a few of these actually. Chef, we didn't guess that one. Chef, I suppose when children are small, they like to cook. And the idea of cooking as a career appeals to them. Even though I think the reality of being a chef is quite different to the dream because they all work very unsociable hours, always holidays and weekends. I have a friend who's married to a chef. Now, firefighter. No, firefighter, fireman, firewoman, a firefighter. Number four, we didn't guess that one. Number three, Elena, you guessed this one, the astronaut. Astronaut number two is an actor. Yes, I think Elena, you suggested actor as well. Uh, and then number one, of course, is dun, 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 teacher. <laughs> I'm a bit surprised actually. Not that I did not want to be a teacher, but I did, of course. But uh, it's not a very glamorous career when you're a child, but I suppose it depends if you are, uh, if you have a, a teacher that you connect with at school when you are a child, uh, like in primary school, um, that role is very important, you know, that role model, um, and it's your main point of contact outside your family circle. So if you have a good teacher, then maybe, yes, you would dream of being a, a teacher when you are, when you are, uh, I have to tell you a story. <laughs> Seeing as we're in advanced level. The other day I was driving home from, from uh, this is a couple of weeks ago now, of course, I picked up Sean, my son, and he's nine years of age. And he was asking me questions about the present simple and the present continuous. And we were having this very good discussion about grammar right and I think it was like he was guessing and he was guessing the future continuous and I said goodness me Sean I said you know what you're very good at English grammar when you grow up maybe you could be an English teacher <laughs> and he says to me I've got better plans mommy <laughs> I laughed so much. He's got better plans. He was just so innocent in the way he said it. I couldn't, I couldn't be offended. Anyway, there's my little story. <laughs> Slide number six. Okay, my childhood. Okay, now we've got some good expressions here, some good vocabulary um, that maybe you don't know. So hopefully I'm going to teach you something. All right. So look at the first one. Throw tantrums. To throw a tantrum. What do you think that means? So you know these, how these work, okay? We need to connect these expressions with the explanations on the other side. All right, guys? So to throw tantrums, what do you think that means? Okay, 
Does it mean to be reprimanded? Does it mean to cry and roll around on the floor? To ridicule or laugh at? To be fussy about food? To respect or admire? To allow other kids to touch your things? Or to suffer punishment for doing wrong? Okay, so for doing something wrong. Which one do you think it is? To throw tantrums. To throw, of course, is the verb lanciare, no? Which I'm not going to do. <clears throat> but to throw a tantrum. Let's see. Okay, I might help you along here. I'm going to help you along. I'm going to give you the first one, okay, to throw tantrums. Is this one here? So, to cry and roll around on the floor. So, when a child, a small child, does not get what they want, what happens? They sometimes, not all children, of course, they throw themselves on the floor and kick their legs and cry because they don't get what they want. We often associate throwing tantrums with uh, the age, the terrible twos, okay? Um, okay, let's see what's the next one. To get into trouble. One sec, I'm going to have a drink of tea. <coughs> Excuse me. Great, Andrea, yeah, to throw tantrums is to cry and roll around on the floor. Exactly, exactly. It's such an irrational behavior that only children can get, get, get away with it. But sometimes adults throw tantrums in their own way too. <laughs> they don't roll around on the floor, but you know, something close enough. <laughs> to get into trouble, to get into trouble, what does that mean? Let me help you along with this one. Unless you're going to jump in again, Andrea. Lily, have you got any idea? There could be a delay. I think there's a bit of a delay at the moment, so bear with me. You know that expression, I'm sure. Bear with me, to bear with someone, is it to be patient with them. No, I know this one is a bit confusing, Elena. You're right. It's, it's, a, it's um, I was confused as well when I first was looking at this list. It's to suffer punishment for doing wrong. So to get into trouble means to, uh, so you do something wrong and then you pay the consequence, no? You pay the consequence. Let's have a look at the next one. To be a picky eater. A picky eater, okay. This, is, this one is quite obvious. Um, picky, the adjective. <clears throat> yes, Andrea, exactly. It's to suffer punishments. To be a picky eater, uh, picky is somebody who's very selective about what they want, okay? Good girl, Lily. To be fussy about food, yes. To be fussy, to be picky. It means somebody who is very precise. They don't like this, but they do like that. Picky eaters are quite they can be annoying if you are, let's say, having a dinner party and you invite people to dinner and somebody is a picky eater. They're hard to please. To pick and choose to, means to decide. Okay, to be told off. To be told off. 
This is very British English. I would never say to be told off, but it is British English. And I'm teaching British English, not Irish English. <laughs> to be told off. To get a good telling off is what they say. Yes, to be reprimanded. This one is to be reprimanded. To tell someone off. Elena ha fatto. What? I don't understand. What do you what are you saying, Andrea? La sanificazione da te. I'm not sure what, if, what that's in relation to. <laughs> ah, okay, 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 okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, you mean of the street, Andrea? Do you mean sanificazione della strada? Hmm. I haven't heard, well, I don't know. I haven't heard if, there, if it's happening around here in Corrata. Anyway. Um, let's see what Elena says. <clears throat> uh, to be told off. To share your toys. What does to share your toys mean? Hmm. To share. Picky eaters to be first. It doesn't like anything. Yes, exactly. Uh, yes, Andrea. To picky eater. He doesn't like anything. They don't like this. They don't like that. They're very annoying, picky eaters. Sean, my little fella, is a bit of a picky eater, I must say. He eats like a bird. Share your toys. What does that mean? To share your toys. So when you're a child, did you share your toys? Yeah, very good, guys. Lily, thank you. Good girl, Elena. Yeah, to allow the other kids to touch your things. Exactly. Not everyone is good at sharing their toys. To look up to someone. This is, oh, Lily, yes, you have a question. Please go ahead. Yes, Andrea, to be told off is to be reprimanded by an adult. Go on, Lily, I will, I will wait for your question before I continue. Good, yes. To look up to Elena. To look up to means to admire. Okay. Now, to look up is different to to look up to. Okay. Do you guys, Lily, well, I'll go back to that. Lily is saying, do you guys think if a child doesn't share his toys, okay, is he wrong, the child? No. <clears throat> Well, look up to the sky. Ah, very good. <laughs> very good. Look up to the sky. Okay, Andrea is going to ask me to sing again now, I think, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to resist. <laughs> Okay, so I was um, I was explaining to look up to and to look up, all right? To look up to means to admire, to respect, or physically to look up to the sky, as Elena says in the song. Um, to look up is another phrasal verb, and it means to um, look something up, to look for something in the dictionary or online, okay? To look up, you can look up online. Lily, I'm not sure if I've answered your question. Are you asking a, a grammatical English question or are you asking a, a question about a, a scenario where a kid doesn't share his toys? if it's right or wrong. <laughs> Let me know what type of question you're asking me. Okay, look up to means to admire. Um, and this last one, to make fun of. Make fun of means, it's the last one. So look, it means to ridicule or to laugh at someone. 
okay? To make fun of, prendere in giro, make fun of somebody. It's not a very nice thing to do, but children do it a lot. Oh, it's not a grammatical question. Okay, so if a child doesn't share his toys, well, it's better for the child to learn to share his toys because it's a good lesson in life, for life, no? Because in life, they have to share their things as they get older. So I believe that it's not, there's no right or wrong, but I think it's good for the child to learn to share toys. And there is an age where children don't want to share toys. But then as they get a little older, they will slowly learn how to share. It's not easy for some children. It depends, if, especially if the child is an only child, no? It helps if the child has brothers or sisters, okay? Okay, Ooh, we've moved on to the next slide. Okay, so remember at the start of the focus, I said that we'd be um, looking at used to and would. All right, so we use used to and would when we will speak about something in the past. Um, one second, sorry now, Andrea, I'm just reading your one. To look up to is like to look after. Look after is a bit different, huh? Look after is like badare, okay? To take care of somebody. So, for example, doctors and nurses look after patients. Uh, teachers look after students to take care of. I, if you mean that it's like a phrasal verb, they are both phrasal verbs, yes, you're right. They are similar, but the meaning is different. To look up to is to respect and admire. And to look after is to care for. Okay? All right. So back to used to and would. Uh, yeah, we use these two grammatical uh, structures to speak about the past. Uh, to speak about something that in the past was true, but now is no longer the case. It's no longer true. Okay, so look at this girl in the picture here. She says, you used to be curly. Oh, you used to have curly hair, Elena. You can say, I used to have curly hair, okay? So she, you, this girl in the picture used to be blonde and now she's a redhead, okay? Redhead, that's a good expression. We can use it only with red hair, okay? If someone has red hair, we can say she is a redhead. He is a redhead. You can't say it with the other hair colors like blonde, black, okay? That's it. You used to have curly hair. Andrea says they should share their toys to learn to share with others. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Andrea, it's a good life lesson. Lily says, I used to live near the sea, but now no longer. Oh, maybe one day again you will live near the sea, Lily. I hope so. I hope so for you. I used to live near the sea. Uh, when I was a child, we had a family home near the sea on the west coast of Ireland, and we went there every summer. We would go there every summer. There we go. So we use these used to and would to speak about the past. Let me show you. We can use used to or would in the past to talk about habitual actions, for example, I used to go to the open air cinema with my boyfriend. We would cuddle and eat popcorn. Oh, how sweet. Now, look at this, would. Okay, they, we can use them both. Uh, ah, Andrea, Lily has figured out who you are. <laughs> and Lily, you say like this, I know who you are okay <laughs> lily i am curious to know how did you figure out who andrea was <laughs> 
Look, okay, good. Um, going back here briefly to use to and would. So we can use both of them to talk about the past, okay? But would is a little nostalgic, okay? So when Lily speaks about living by the sea, she can use would, all right? Would, of course, is our modal verb in English that we use to create the conditional, yeah? We have the subject, would, and then base verb. Um... Uh, this is how we create the conditional, no? I would go, she would study, for example. We see it in our second conditional as well. Um, uh, Lily, <laughs> she's, she knows who you are, Andrea. <laughs> okay, uh, and would... You used to wear glasses and now you wear contacts. Perfectly, perfect, perfect. Okay, so for example, um, here, Andrea, you wouldn't say, I would wear glasses and now I wear contacts, okay? Used to is very specific to describe something that was true and isn't true now. And would is more nostalgic, okay? We would walk along the beach at sunset without a care in the world. Andrea, do you have a red car? Do you have a red car, Andrea? <laughs> I'm going to... Add the last comment on here. Oh, mystery solved. So now, <laughs> now you know who Andrea is. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so look at used to and would there, followed by the base verb, all right? So when we do the, um, when we do the affirmative with that subject, used to, and then the base verb, okay, infinitive, all right? I call it the base verb, infinitive, okay. When we want to do the negative, can you tell me the negative of this? Who can tell me? So the affirmative is subject, used to, and then the base verb. Oh, we've got somebody else has joined us, fantastic. <laughs> We've been a cozy group of four up to now. Now there are five of us. <laughs> um, okay, who can tell me what's the negative of subject used to and the base verb? For example, I didn't use... Oh, I just said it. Okay, my bad. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to give the example now. I gave half of it. Come on, guys. Don't be shy. That's my catchphrase for the last week or so. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. or else I will have to jump in and tell you how to do the negative. Subject plus used to, and the base verb is our affirmative. <clears throat> good, Alora, almost, almost, Lily, very good. Look, I will show you, it's almost correct, good girl. Subject, didn't, very good. And then we have used to and then the base verb look i'll show you Ooh, verb okay like so all right now use you see used to not used to we lose the d because this is like a simple past negative a simple past negative we've got subject didn't and then the base verb no i didn't go she didn't see we didn't look all right, so it's the same here. So it's not used to, but used to. 
even though the pronunciation is the same. Eh? In written English, you can see the difference, but in the in the spoken English, uh, you can't hear the difference because it's said so quickly. I used to, I didn't used to. What about the interrogative? Who can tell me the interrogative? Apply the same rule as uh, when you as that, that would apply if you were um, you do, making a question in the past simple, yeah. If you make a question in the past simple, what do we do? We use the quasi trick, don't we? The Q U A S I trick, question word, auxiliary, subject, and then infinitive or base verb. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to jump in because we're, oh my goodness, we don't have much time left. Did subject used to and then base verb. Okay, guys, look. Did you used to? Good, Elena, yeah, very good. No, you don't say I wasn't used. No, you say I didn't used to. Um, you don't say I wasn't used to. I wasn't used to uh, getting up early. No, you say, Ah, okay, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Okay, that's different used to. One second, Andrea. I think what you are talking about is used to as an expression, which means essere abituato a. Is that what you were thinking, maybe? Like, if I say I wasn't used to drinking coffee without sugar, but now I am, is that what you meant? Let me know. If that's what you meant, then there is another, I will explain it, yeah. I actually have a SCADA. I have a SCADA, a document uh, that explains, that it gives a little breakdown of used to, would, and then the two other forms of used to that we have in English. One of which is to be used to, and the other is to get used to. Okay, I think that is what you meant. What I can do is I will, we will email you, we'll email you the, um, the PDF of that of that document okay it's just a document that i did up in word uh with examples and an explanation of the four the four things the four grammar points okay all right let me move on to the la not the last slide and the slide number eight okay so here i want us to create questions with used to so did you used to. Look at the example here. Did you used to, base verb, throw tantrums? Or, as a child, would you share your toys with other children? Okay, so for example, um, Elena, when you were a child, um, uh, did you used to be a picky eater? For example, I don't think you did. I don't think you were a picky eater. Did you used to uh, make fun of other children, Lily? I don't think so. Can you add, I'd like you to ask questions with used to or would. Okay, and you can use some of these expressions, throw tantrums, get into trouble, 
like for like that's a good one did you used to get into trouble when you were a teenager when you were a child no can you if you can ask a question Uh, no, you weren't a picky eater. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> Can you guys ask a question and put it in the comments field? <laughs> you used to eat everything. No, I didn't used to make fun of other children. Good girl, Lily. <laughs> Can you guys ask me a question? Can you write a question in the comments field? With used to or with would? Do you still eat everything, Elena? <laughs> I presume you are not a picky eater now. So a question, okay, good girl, Lily. Did you used to look up to your parents? Fantastic, good question. Oh, look at that, Lily. And then I came up to came up with the same same question. Did you used to look up to your parents, and did you used to look up to your teacher? Perfect, good good questions. And you did, Lily. Good girl. <laughs> Very good. They're good questions. Yes, I, of course, I used to look up to my parents. I still look up to my parents, even though I am taller than them. Even my dad, I think. <laughs> I still eat everything. I. <laughs> okay, good girl, Elena. I still eat everything. So here you say, if I could, I will eat even more. So a small correction there. If I could... You are here, we're using, you were, you, we're, you're starting off with the second, um, it's the second conditional, okay? So if I could, in the second part, you, you say, I would eat even more. I would, okay, not I will, I will, we find in the first conditional. And I would is in the second conditional. So if I could, I would eat even more. Did I used to throw tantrums? I never threw tantrums, but I should check with my parents. I don't, I don't think I threw tantrums. I think I was quite a good little girl. <laughs> All right, let's look at this one here. So now... Okay, so this does not apply to you, Lily, seeing as you are only 19. <laughs> but if what you can do is you can think of what you were like, your appearance, your tastes, your character. Think of what you were like when you were a child, okay? For me and Andrea and Elena, we can think about our appearance and tastes and character when we were teenagers. And we use would, no, we use used to, sorry. We use used to. For example, when I was a teenager, I used to have a perm, <laughs> curly perm hair, very 1980s. And now I have long straight hair. Your tastes, your character, your habits or your fears, things that you are scared of, all right? Like this one, I used to be shy, but now I'm outgoing. Okay. Andrea says, I used to throw lots of tantrums and never give up. <laughs> you are a hard nut to crack. I'd say you're still a hard nut to crack, Andrea. <laughs> Lily says, when I was a child, I used to have long hair. Oh, and now, what's your hair like now? Oh, it's like to here, isn't it now? Did I used to play hide and seek? That's a great, great, good English, Andrea. Well done. Hide and seek, Elena and Lily. Do you know what that game is? Oh, you used to be very shy. I remember you telling me that. 
Uh, oh, Andrea says, I would eat the bread I used to eat in that past. Hmm. I'm not sure I get the second part of that sentence. And now your hair is shorter, like to here, I think. Yeah, it's like a bob, we say. A bob is when your hair is straight and to here. Yes, I did used to play hide and seek. Andrea, yes, I used to play hide and seek. You will notice there I said I did used to play hide and seek. Okay. Um, we can use the auxiliary in the affirmative when we are using the emphatic affirmative, okay? So when we want to reinforce something, for example, uh, if someone says, you don't like uh, Italian food, I can reply saying, I do like Italian food. Okay, so here, I do like, it's called the emphatic affirmative because I'm using the auxiliary to reinforce. Let's see, what else have we got? Uh, Sarah, did you used to speak Irish? Yes, I did used to speak Irish, Andrea. I used to be very good. When I left school at 18, I was fluent, almost, in Irish, you know? I could have a good conversation. But now, oh my God, 30 years later, <laughs> I, I can't speak it anymore. I have, some, I have some words and some expressions. Uh, that means, my name is Sarah Rogers. There you go. It's very different to English. <clears throat> very, very different. Okay, guys. We've got one more slide to go, but I think it's, a, if I remember correctly, it is like a repetition of this one where we combine the memories with uh, uh, used to and would. Okay. Actually, before we finish up, do you want to tell me your favorite memory from the past your best memory in your life what's your best memory it can be last year eh? it could be when you were a child it could be yesterday can you tell me your best memory and then we can finish the focus activity what's your best memory hmm Let's see what you guys come up with. And then we can conclude our focus activity, our very intimate little focus activity with just the four of us. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lily. I know, it's a strange way of communicating, no? Me, I'm I feel as if I'm talking at you. <laughs> But I like that you perceive it differently and that I'm talking with you. <laughs> Elena, when we get back to the school, it's going to be difficult to change back into, you know, having more student talking time. Because Andrea and Lily, when we are teachers, it's important for us to have more student talking time than teacher talking time. <laughs> and that's not what we're doing at the moment. It's 100% teacher talking time, TTT. <laughs> okay, let's see if you guys are going to come up with a memory. Otherwise, I'm going to have to end the broadcast. That's what I have a big red button here that says end broadcast. Unless you've got something else to add. It was a nice, nice focus activity, this one. We talked about our childhoods, memories, the grammar, um, the grammar point used to and would. And we learned some uh, little expressions connected with um, our, with the children and their behavior, like throwing tantrums, getting into trouble. Elena, Elena used to make necklaces and bracelets with her grandmother. 
That's a lovely memory. I hope you still have the necklaces and bracelets. And Lily's best memories were the afternoons near the sea, eating pizza and ice cream. Wow, that sounds pretty, pretty good. That sounds pretty perfect, eh? Life does not get much better than that. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. All right, thank you so much for, for joining me and for uh, and looking at beautiful people. Oh, that's always good to do, Lily. <laughs> thank you very much for joining me. Have a lovely evening. Let me check when the next focus activity for this level is uh, level 8 to 10. The next focus level 8 to 10 is tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. Okay, tomorrow at 7 o'clock, there's another focus for 8 to 10. Okay, guys, bye. Mwah. See you soon. <laughs>